My target on gold is 3000 this year, what I call pre-bust. It doesn't have to coincide with the top of the equity market, but I think it's likely to be this year. Um, and it's you know a short-term move. I think we're going to see pauses along the way, but generally you had your consolidation. So don't sit around looking for another one because I think this thing is, you know, you're just getting started back down. We've had a, a good couple of weeks in silver, and I think there's there's that party is just getting started. So I think silver can, and my long held target is sixty. I said recently, if it breaks sixty, you could run to seventy five very quickly. So sixty is still my target, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's low. Gold has emerged as a dominant force, etching its name in the annals of history with unprecedented highs throughout the first quarter of 2024. With each surge. The metal is on a relentless quest for greater heights, captivating the attention of investors worldwide. Notably, contrarian macro strategist David Hunter has confidently declared the onset of a melt-up, setting ambitious short-term targets for gold at $3,000, an affirmation of his conviction in the continued momentum of this remarkable rally. Similarly, silver has not been immune to the enthusiasm, with Hunter forecasting a target of $60, potentially soaring to $75 if the bullish trajectory persists. March bore witness to a remarkable spectacle as gold shattered its records with noteworthy frequency, ascending to new peaks at $2,159, $2,180, $2,222, and $2,225, and culminating in a staggering $2,236 per ounce within a mere span of 21 days. Such unparalleled momentum only accelerated in April with gold reaching an astonishing $2,305, an astonishing 28% surge within six months. Even silver, often overshadowed by its golden counterpart, has stepped into the limelight, breaching the psychologically significant threshold of $27 per ounce for the first time in 2024. Hunter's optimism, however, is met with a healthy dose of skepticism from some investors, wary of past disappointments and adopting a cautious stance towards the current rally. Yet, as Hunter noted, this skepticism may paradoxically bolster the rally's sustainability. Recognizing the historical patterns, analysts at GSC Commodity Intelligence now turn their gaze towards silver, anticipating its inevitable ascent towards record highs. Acknowledging the potential challenges posed by a market downturn, Hunter and analysts alike maintain that the set targets for gold and silver prices are within reach, propelled by many economic factors. Come along as we explore the valuable insights provided by David Hunter. Don't miss out on our latest updates. Subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you for tuning in. Gold had uh, basically a triple top, maybe even a quadruple top there before it broke out. Um, you know, started back in 2020. It ran up to the, you know, the high 2000 area, uh, went back down, came back up in 21 and again in 22. And we're finally breaking through um, to new highs. And once it broke out, you started seeing people uh, kind of jump on the bandwagon. So, so you've got legs there. I my target on gold is three thousand this year. Um, what I call pre-bust um, doesn't have to coincide with the top of the equity market, but I think it's likely to be this year. Um, and it's you know short-term move. I think we're going to see pauses along the way, but generally you had your consolidation. So don't sit around looking for another one because I think this thing is, uh, you know, you're just getting started. Gold's at new, new all-time highs, obviously. Silver's a long ways from its old highs and has been the laggard for a long time. As you say, the gold-silver ratio is up, you know, was up at 89, I think, and is just starting to come back down. We've had a, a good couple of weeks in silver, and I think there's there's that party is just getting started. So I think silver can, and my long held target is sixty. I think that can be seen, if not uh, by the end of this year, and I think it very well could be by the end of this year, uh, it'd be early next. So um, you know, sixty, and I've said recently. If it breaks 60, you could run to 75 very quickly. So 60 is still my target, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's low. That's a long way. I mean, silver's you know just been in the kind of low 20s range for quite a while. Finally, has moved up to 27. 
and I think could move very quickly to mid thirties and then maybe pause and run again, or certainly move up into the low thirties and pause. Uh, I think a lot of upside in the miners as a result of this, you know, and I, I think investors who have been disillusioned by particularly silver, but by the miners, um, because it took so long, you know, a lot of those that were bullish and expected these breakouts before have kind of thrown in the towel. It's taking them a while to believe this rally because I think, like, oh, I've seen this before. I'm not buying it. And so it, it's, you know, that's a healthy skepticism that will keep these things running. In the bust, you know, as I say, there's going to be a melt up in the equity markets and then a uh, bear market following that that will be accompanied by a global bust, which is a, a big financial crisis and an economic downturn. In the bust, you could see, let's say I'm right about the 3,000 target on gold. There's nothing that says it can't come back here. So gold could go from 3,000 back to, um, you know, 20, 21 or 200. Um, or, you know, which was, you know, back to the breakout point, basically. Um, and there's no, there's no magic to my target that it couldn't, uh, you know, it certainly could be exceeded. So you might be, you know, 33 or four or 500 before it, stops and then comes back and it may not come back as far who knows um silver is going to be the more volatile metal if it goes to 60 i doubt that it comes all the way back to the low 20s but it could you know if if the stock market's going to drop 80 percent, there's nothing that says silver can't drop by 60 percent or 70 percent. so you know it's a much more economically sensitive and volatile metal um so there may be another opportunity in the bust but between now and my targets, I think the you know you're not going to get these kind of opportunities again. You know they'll stocks experienced a sharp decline on Thursday amid volatile trading ahead of the March jobs report. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeted by 530.16 points, marking a 1.35 percent decrease and its worst session since March 2023. This marked the index's fourth consecutive day in the red. Similarly. The S&P 500 dropped by 1.23%, closing at 5,147.21. David Hunter, a respected market analyst, predicts that the ongoing bull market in stocks will peak, likely around 7,000 on the S&P. He suggests that revisiting these highs in the coming decades is improbable. On the inflation front, the Federal Reserve's preferred metric, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, showed a 2.5% increase over the 12 months ending in February slightly outpacing January's 2.4% rise, but aligning with fact-set consensus estimates. The surge in the annual inflation rate was propelled by a notable 2.3% jump in energy prices last month, as indicated by data from the Commerce Department. Despite this, Fed Chair Jerome Powell expressed minimal concern about the situation. Hunter has warned that inflation rates could climb as high as 25% by the end of the decade or early next, potentially leading to a significant decrease in price earnings, multiples, and market valuations. Let's get back to the interview. I see this a lot in the, uh, in the markets is people kind of have recency bias, whatever they remember as the most recent actions, or they think that's forever or that's that's always going to happen. We've had times when, when the metals um, go with the market and times when they are very much uh, counter to the market. Um, if you look at the first decade of, of this century, you know, from 2001 to 2011, we had a huge bull run. And that was also a time when we had pretty good stock market um, at during periods of that time. So, so there have been times what, like this when the market, the stock market can be going up and the metals can be going up at the same time. So I had that question a lot when I was bullish when everybody was bearish. And they said, you know, they're not going to go up together. And I said, I think they are. Um, and so I, you know, we're just, I think you have to step back and realize that there's no one formula for these things. Sometimes they move with the market, and I think this is one of those times. I have been on record to saying that the highs in the stock market this year, and as I say, I think 7,000 on the SP is, a, is my target. If we reach that high or whatever high we reach this year, and if that's the secular top I'm calling for, I don't believe we'll get back to those highs or anything close to those highs again in the next couple decades and maybe longer 
we, this is a major, major final thrust into a top. And the reason for that is because first we're going to have this 80% bear market in the global bust. Uh, you know, global bust is something I don't pe- people hear the name, the, the term, but I don't think they really understand how significant that is. You know, it's nothing like what they've lived with in post-World War II era. Well, you know, it's going to be a, 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 a short-lived, I think, relatively short-lived, you know, 12 or 18 months. But you're going to be wondering what's coming out of that uh, because it's, you know, bank failures, it's a lot of things. So it's 2008-9 was kind of a precursor to it. So you you got a pretty good taste of what a financial crisis looks like. Uh, this one, I think, is going to be worse. So, But coming out the other side of that, because the central banks are going to have to respond so aggressively to that bust, the printing of money to a degree we've never seen in this world, and 2020 was beyond anything we'd ever seen, this will be four or five times that, will trigger an inflation cycle in the post-bust era, meaning you know, 26, 2026 and beyond, culminate in inflation getting up as high as 25% in this country by the end of the decade or early next decade. Uh, If that's the case, that really shrinks PE multiples, market multiples. You know, stocks are very interest sensitive. And if interest rates are going down as they were the last 40 years, generally trending down, it boosts price earnings multiples. It boosts the market multiple tremendously. You get the reverse of that, where rates are moving towards high double digits and price earnings multiples or a market multiple that's 20 or 25 can move back down to single digits. So that puts a real damper on equity markets. Um, There will still be many stocks that will perform in that environment, mostly commodity producers, you know, uh, precious metal miners. industrial companies that serve those industries. So there'll be there'll be places to make plenty of money in the next cycle following the bust. Bank of America maintained its bullish stance on gold heading into 2024, with their conviction only strengthening as the year progressed. According to Widmer, a bank representative, they had initially projected a price estimate of $2,400 per ounce if the Federal Reserve were to cut rates in the first quarter of 2024. Despite potential delays in rate cuts, They stand by this estimate for the entirety of the year. Looking ahead, how do you anticipate global economic trends and policy decisions influencing the trajectories of gold, silver, and stock markets in the remainder of 2024? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.